turn my audio off. Here we are. I lost my quest. Hello, everybody. That was exciting. Not just the two weeks, but like the last five minutes. Uh, hi, Scott. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, uh, minor work area disaster. I have some rules about not keeping liquids on the work surface. Uh, today, I demonstrated to myself, great reminder, why I don't keep liquids on my work surface. Up and running now, and it has been an exciting couple of weeks. We've been off the last couple of weeks. Uh, we'll be, everyone's back here. We'll be getting more, and I hope to be doing a little more video content coming forward with some mock drafts, etc. I'm Bob Harris, senior editor, Football Diehards. Uh, and, uh, and boy, there has been a lot going on. We'll recount some of that, take any questions you have. Uh, we'll kind of give it a minute, see if anybody shows up uh, to start asking some questions. But, man. There's been a lot going on. This has been the zaniest offseason in recent memory, I think is fair to say. I think that's no exaggeration. And I think, you know, the question for me, the thing that I've been thinking about before we get into all of this, is this the new normal or is this a, an aberration? Is this the outlier? Is this just a one of those years? And I think there's a a lot of reason to believe that we're seeing the beginning of a trend, uh, you know, not just in terms of uh, quarterbacks. The cast have been great, Scott. Thank you for asking. I always appreciate that. Um, but I think, you know, we've seen, started to see the trend. I mean, Tom Brady kind of got the ball rolling by moving on to a new team, having some success. And I think, you know, other quarterbacks had wanted to do this. And I think now people feel more comfortable uh, on both sides of the equation with the range of possible outcomes or, or at least being willing to, you know, understand that maybe it is time to move on. We saw that with some of the receiver moves and we're going to get into all these. Don't, don't worry. But there's, you know, there's been a, a distinct shift in it seems in the thinking. And some of this has to do with the, the huge contracts that are going out. We've had two receivers in the last two weeks become the highest paid receivers in the NFL. New background. We're changing things up, messing around, Robert. Thanks for coming. Appreciate you. Uh, but I think we're seeing kind of a bit of a paradigm shift. And I think uh, most notable was was Tariq Hill saw that Devontae Adams, in case you've been hibernating, traded to the Las Vegas Raiders, became the highest paid wide receiver in the NFL. Tariq Hill was in the midst of working, you know, on an extension with the Chiefs. And uh, that new deal for for Adams kind of said prompted the Hill camp to say, whoa, let's readjust our expectations. And the Chiefs said, well, you know, Maybe if we can't get there, we're going to be okay seeing what we can get back. And I think, I think this might be something we're going to see more of going forward, especially as salaries go up. Look, the salary cap is going to go up greatly. It did this year, and it's going to keep going up. 
Uh, new revenue will be coming into the league through new partners and redone television deals. And and let's not kid ourselves. I mean, uh, I want to go back and I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this out there. If it's if it's not like uh, if it's not totally accurate, but but hard to pick. AFC has gotten crazy. AFC West, for that matter. But you go back to last season, and I just want to say this anecdotally, and someone can check me here if it's not wrong, but, you know, the top 50 TV programs on TV last year on the television set, I think 48 of them were football. So, you know, it's very popular. People love to watch it. We like to watch it as fantasy managers. There's nothing better than getting our eyeballs. That's our chances to find out what these guys are all about. And we're watching, you know, as like nobody's business. And you can even look at the contracts of the people who talk about football on your television box and that Troy Aikman is making 90 million for the next five years. Joe Buck gets 75 million for five years to go with him. I think that's probably more money than Troy Aikman made playing football. He's making, you know, talking about football one game a week without all the practices between. So clearly there's a lot of money out there working around Amazon, getting into the mix. Al Michaels goes to Amazon. So a deal similar to bucks for the Thursday night game. So, I think we're just seeing the, you know, the the amount of money and uh, teams being a little more willing to think outside the box and, and say, look, this is not working here. We're going to move on. So I'm going to dig into those. Again, if you have questions as we go along, chime in, man. Let's do USFL in a couple weeks. I've seen the commercials. I've yet to get myself worked up. I see Jeff Fisher in one of those commercials. That's horrifying. Some team's going to be 8-8 eight and eight or something. I don't know how many games they actually play. Um... But yeah, the USFL is coming and, you know, more football. There will be daily components to that. And so there will be more going on out there. And uh, hopefully we see some players, you know, able to prove themselves and make the leap to the NFL and give us a little more. We've seen a number of moves in the last couple of weeks, right? Some of them have been fantasy friendly. Some of them have been, you know, kind of fantasy non exciting moves. Some of them have been like, oh, no, why? And uh, so uh, the biggest move this so far this offseason. I want to say, you know, so as you look at the the most uh, impactful, right, and 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 you you look at the list, and, and let's just run down the list. And I mean, I said this in a video on Sirius. Go to the Sirius XM uh, Twitter feed or the Football Diehards Twitter feed or mine, and you'll see a lot of these videos I did. And I, I think in one of the videos I said, you know, things move fast. You, you, I can remember when uh, Calvin Ridley getting suspended for a year was a big story. We don't even think about that, right? I mean, there's a number of Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers both returning. Uh, seems like a lifetime ago. Seattle getting Russell Wilson seems like a lifetime ago. That, that like knocked uh, Rodgers off the headlines after about an hour there, right? So uh, so let's just run through some of these. Deshaun Watson traded to the Cleveland Browns. I'll, I'll go kind of by position. I think that'll be a, a good way to get it started so we can kind of be a little organized in our thinking. And jump in with the questions, and I'll if I don't get it to them right away, I will get to them, you know, over the course of the the chat, so we can kind of run through some of your issues with these moves. Uh, but but let's just lay them out there. Oh, Deshaun Watson to Cleveland, uh, Seattle traded to the Broncos, so that has impact on two teams. Drew Locke and Noah Fant sent back to Seattle. So does Seattle really have a quarterback? We'll see. How does that affect DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett? It does. By the way, Seattle retained Rashad Penny, so. Colts traded Carson Wentz to the Washington Commanders and then replaced him with Matt Ryan, which left a hole in Atlanta that they filled with Marcus Mariota. Totally understandable, being that he is familiar with Arthur Smith, worked under his system in Tennessee. Maybe not with great success, but, you know, sometimes, according to Ryan Tannehill, quarterbacks can rebound, can uh, have a, you know, a, a, a renaissance at a new location, and maybe with the scheme, he can be a good fit there. He's got that kind of athletic ability we're looking for. Jameis Winston back to the Saints. So, we, you know, we'll go back. Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers announced their return. A couple quarterbacks got some nudies. Matt Stafford got a little, an extension. That's fantastic. The wide receiver market has been nutso. So we mentioned the Chiefs traded Tyree Kill to the Dolphins. Uh, then uh, And uh, the Jets were also in the mix there. Uh, and then uh, what do we have? They replaced him with a series of guys, Marquez Valdez-Scantling, who seemed like a great spot to return to Green Bay with Devontae Adams moving on to Las Vegas. But the Chiefs also answer, a, a, added Juju Smith-Schuster, among other things, with Adams going to the Raiders. There's not a lot left in Green Bay. We'll dig into that a little bit and talk about the values there. Allen Robinson goes to the Rams. The Rams subsequently traded Robert Woods to the Tennessee Titans. 
and released Julio Jones, of course. So, I mean, just so much going on. And we can go back to the DJ Chark goes to Detroit. I think a great landing spot for him. But Christian Kirk breaks the bank, right? Going to Jacksonville. Uh, you know, what's legitimately a 70 plus million dollar deal. Uh, you know, is worth as much as 84 million for a guy who just kind of barely broke out. Uh, so, and DJ Chark gets what, about $10 million to prove himself on one year, whereas, and he's been pretty proven, whereas Chark, you know, Chark, uh, whereas uh, Kirk gets a, a ton of money, uh, not, not, I don't think quite as proven, but we'll find out. Opportunity matters. Godwin, Mike Williams, both agreed to long-term deals with their respective teams, the Buccaneers and Chargers running backs. We have Leonard Fournette returning. Some of these moves at running back are the great moves because they're not moves at all. And I see the questions coming in. I will get to them. I just want to set the table here for us. But, you know, I love the Cordero Patterson back to Atlanta where Arthur Smith seems to have unlocked the secret to using to, to usage for Cordero Patterson, even though he wore down a little bit. They added Damian Williams. Mike Davis won't be back. We'll see. I suspect the draft will be uh, – well, there will be some additions there, right, in, in that backfield. They need wide receivers there, and they've been adding some lower-level guys. Uh, they lost Russell Gage to the to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Is he the new Antonio Brown? We'll talk about these things. Um, Ronald Jones goes to Kansas City after Fournette returned to the Bucs. Cordero Patterson back to the Falcons. Marlon Mack signs with the Houston Texans. Want to talk about opportunity? You know, it's not a good team, but there were times last year when Rex Burkhead was a viable play, right? Or at least if you caught him on the right week, he was, so. So much going on. I'll dig into those, and uh, we'll take your questions. Happy to discuss anything you want to discuss in terms of fantasy prospects. We'll kind of leave the NFL draft. It's coming. There are a lot of prospects. That was our last show. If you missed it with John Laub, go back and see it. Um, might try to get Matt Waldman on here at some point as well. Uh, talk to all these guys who know a little bit more rookie about the rookies than me, at least about the talent, and they've studied them. I get a lot more excited when these players find a landing spot, uh, put a helmet on them, Tell me what the coach they're working with, the scheme they're working in, the other pieces on the roster. And to me, that's when it starts. But obviously, there's a lot of work put into these guys prior to that. So we have a good understanding of their skill set. I leave it to guys like Laub, who, who really put in a lot of effort to understand what these guys are all about during their career. So so let's get a couple questions in before we dig into some of the things. That, and, and so Robert wants to know if I think Cleveland ends up cutting Baker can't imagine him staying right i mean it's just that's not gonna fly uh i could see baker taking the watson path right i'm just not gonna not gonna be on the field not be active whatever um but this is an issue they signed jacoby Brissett. i think because his skill set more closely reflect what deshaun watson has without quite reaching that level or at least the level we last saw remember deshaun watson was the lead league the leading passer in the league in 2020 last he played so or at least in passing yards. So, look, he's a top five quarterback. There's no doubt about it. And uh, the only question to me with him is when he's going to play, how much discipline he's going to serve. And, like, I'm not going to throw out all the disclaimers. We all know he is not, you know, there are all the allegations against him. He's avoided criminal charges. He's still working on the civil charges. The league is still watching. We've seen the league suspend players who weren't charged before, as recently as Ezekiel Elliott. We can go back to Ben Roethlisberger. Elliott got, I think, six games and – that wasn't lessened. Uh, he was never charged with anything. Bad judgment. Um, and, uh, and and Ben, obviously, some serious charges. And he got his, uh, he appealed, and his was rolled from six games to four games. So uh, so we'll see what happens with Watson. But I think this is an interesting move. And just Devontae Parker, look, I mean, there's some teams with some obvious holes at wide receiver. The Patriots, the Packers, I mean, they come immediately to mind as teams with great needs. And I mean, who, you know, when you have a good quarterback, I mean, I think my desired outcome would be uh, the Packers. Atlanta is another team. Again, I mentioned at the top, they've lost a number of receivers. They don't have a lot of talent. Not named Kyle Pitts in the receiving core right now. Uh, Zacchaeus Olamide is now the uh, the top wide receiver on that roster, and that's not going to fly, right? And, Cal and, and Kyle Pitts needs somebody, right? Calvin Ridley, again, suspended for the year in case you just now caught up with that. Um I mean, that's a that's a big deal, right? So they need some talent around him. And the Saints offseason or non-off season, and what do you make of Taysom being groomed at tight end? It means that the new coaching staff doesn't view him as a quarterback. That doesn't mean he's not going to play that role of kind of, a, you know, in the red zone, that he's not going to come in and be under center or be in the mix or whatever. But it just means they're committed to a pretty traditional offense with Jameis Winston as the passer. So 
that may have been a more of a Sean Payton type experiment, it seems, than than the rest of the staff. Pete Carmichael remains the offensive coordinator, so there's going to be continuity in the scheme. So I think it's a great idea to bring Jameis Winston back once they missed out on Watson. And uh, and we'll see what he can do. They were a pretty decent team, right? They were like, what, five and two when Winston went down. So there's it's not like they're bereft of hope. Uh, with Jameis Winston at quarterback. So I could see, you know, I could see that they play tough defense. They have some great players. Michael Thomas is kind of the wild card here. Does he bounce back and become the guy he was? Talking to people who cover the team locally, including Mike Triplett, among others. Uh, they think that things are going well for him, uh, that Thomas is in a good spot mentally and physically, and uh, and he'll be ready to rebound. I think that's not an unreasonable expectation with Jameis back, that he would make use of a receiver like that. And some of the other receiving assets there, Marquez Callaway, they re-signed Traquan Smith. Uh, so, I mean, th- there's some there's some other assets there that, that can be helpful. So that's not a bad thing. I mean, I don't know if Traquan Smith will ever be a thing. But, you know, th- I think this is good news for Alvin Kamara. And remember, Alvin Kamara is a guy we're going to have to watch with his off-field issues. Uh, uh, again, Mike Triplett, my co-host in, on Sirius XM Radio, Mike Dempsey, uh, you know, both are, will remind you that, you know, sometimes these things get put off a year, right? Like, so Kamara, maybe he's got trials or faces charges. They'll get some kind of delays that push him out through the last year. And what we've seen from the NFL is they tend to wait, wait these things out. Deshaun Watson being the prime example or the most recent example of this and until they get as much information as they can. So, uh, so, I mean, I'm, I'm still drafting right now Alvin Kamara as if he's, going to be Alvin Kamara, which means I'm getting him at a great value. Middle of the second round is not that unusual, although he seems to be climbing a little bit. Uh, so, so yeah, a lot of good pieces there. But uh, let's go back to the Watson, uh, the Watson situation, the Cleveland situation, let's call it. Uh, three, four. Yeah, I think that's the, Robert, I think that's the, the overreaching thing from an NFL perspective. The AFC is increasingly loaded. The NFC, less so. I mean, Tom Brady... Puts the Buccaneers back in a good position. By the way, did anyone hear Bruce Arians stepped aside as head coach? Hmm. <sighs> a lot of stuff going on here. So anyhow, but yeah, I agree with that. AFC increasingly loaded. Again, the 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 AFC West, man. Think about that. You know, the quarterbacks now. Russell Wilson joins the mix. Uh, uh, Derek Carr gets Devonte Adams. We know what the Chargers are all about. They keep they're one of their key pieces and. And uh, Patrick Mahomes obviously loses some pieces, so this is going to be a this is going to be an interesting battle in the AFC and just in general in the AFC. Uh, the Dolphins have obviously ramped up their skill players around uh, uh, Tua Tonga Valoa, so we'll see what goes on. But the Cleveland deal, right? So let's kind of break that down a little bit. Again, from the Houston perspective, nothing changes, right? That was that was always you know we knew that Watson was going to be playing quarterback there, so. No values changed there. And Davis Mills seems like I thought he progressed well at the end of the season. Looks like he'll be the starter going into the season. I don't think that hurts guys like Brandon Cooks, Marlon Mack being there. Opportunity knocks. Opportunities are what I'm chasing uh, at that position. So I'll be chasing Mar- Marlon Mack, especially early in, in ongoing best balls and drafts. You know, I, I'm in some very late round situations in some of the best balls I'm in right now, where if the timing had been more fortuitous, it would have been great to land. You see that in best balls this time of year. And that's something to watch for. You know, watch the timing. Sometimes just good fortune comes into play, and, and you'll see that. Another thing in best balls, by the way, uh, not drafting RBs early is the way to go. I think maybe a little less so because some of the top receivers that we were looking at now are in new situations. And, it, you know, I, I would like to gain a little clarity. Look, I'll get into the Adams to, to Vegas because I think that's not a, the worst move in the world. But – is it as good as playing with Aaron Rodgers? Do I have as much confidence in in Devontae Adams being the player he's been the last couple of years playing with Rodgers? No, I don't. He can be very good. He's a very good player, right? And Derek Carr and he have history that we'll talk about here. But also Darren Waller and Hunter Renfro are in the mix there. There weren't as many people soaking up targets or at least demanding targets uh, in Green Bay. So I think it's an interesting situation. So one move I didn't mention that becomes much more interesting, though, with Deshaun Watson going to Cleveland is Amari Cooper being traded to Cleveland. I mean, whatever you think of Amari Cooper's time in Dallas, if it was a disappointment, the Cowboys clearly thought so, right? But he's still a very good route runner and could be one of the better receivers in the league playing with Deshaun Watson. So when you're in these early best balls, it doesn't hurt to roll the dice on some of these guys, even knowing, like, let's say Deshaun Watson, I'm expecting him to miss some time. I'm also expecting him to not miss some time. 
Uh, so if you're throwing, you know, if you're throwing some darts at guys that are going late and something else that I just want to remind everyone every time that I'm talking about best balls is, uh, is go ahead and, you know, whatever the platform you use is on if, if and if you haven't been drafting like go down the you know scroll down their adp list at however they present it i know at best ball tens they present you an, an adp and there are players that you know alan robinson dj chark uh you know some of your marlon mack is going to be an example uh and and so on that are going to be well down the list of the adp but maybe you're going to be able to jump and take advantage of especially if you're playing in a room full of people who aren't as well versed or haven't been following along as closely don't be afraid to jump for those guys that you've seen move uh, and made moves and, and you know, that aren't on the radar because they're so far down the ADP ranks, people don't see them as soon as they should. You know, you can throw in some of the guys coming off injury last year, although I think those are all normalizing. J.K. Dobbins would be an example of a guy who's climbing up the ADP but missed all of last year. So don't be afraid to dive in on these people when the price, while the price is still super bargain, uh, super bargains. I think it's a great idea and something, you know, and that's one of the things about drafting early in best balls. You kind of get a feel for this and where these guys are going, and it's a, it's a, it's a nice move. So back to Cleveland, though, does this hurt the rushing attack? They've talked about this. Andrew Berry, the GM, has talked about Kevin Stefanski at least making adjustments to his offense, which has been run heavy. Uh, all of a sudden, you have Deshaun Watson, who was a great passer, also a very mobile quarterback who can do some things with his legs. But if you think he's not going to benefit from the play-action opportunities that come with this offense, think again. He is going to benefit. But also – are the running backs there, Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt, going to benefit? Uh, maybe a lighter workload, maybe a different split, whatever. It's going to be a better offense. There's going to be more meat on the bone, right? There's going to be more drives extended because you have Deshaun Watson. There are going to be more opportunities with defenses having to back off, can't run a safety up in the box, or you know you can't keep those eight guys in the box that you could when Nick Chubb was lined up there before. So you're going to see some, some instances, and, and I'm sure Kevin Stefanski, I mean, for whatever we think of his offense, is a pretty smart guy. I mean, he, you know, they didn't bring Deshaun Watson in to have him hand off to Nick Chubb 40 times a game, right? I mean, they're going to be throwing the football, and he will benefit from the play-action opportunities, like I said, but we'll throw in some RPOs and some things like that that he can take advantage of his skill set. This could be a better offense. Amari Cooper also, maybe have more opportunities than he did in Dallas. I don't think we'll see, you know, I think we'll see some more moves in the draft. It's a receiver-heavy draft. We all know this. There's a lot of teams that need receivers. Speak back to Parker, by the way. I mentioned Atlanta, right, along with Green Bay, New England. I mean, there are others that need. It's not been great there. And and so I'm not sure that that's entirely. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, I think the, you know, that's going to be the thing. There's going to be a lot. There's, there's still moves to come. Like I can't see green Bay settling, you know, for having their receiving core. Randall Cobb is their top receiver on their roster. They lost Equinamia St. Brown as well. So Amari Rogers is still there, but I mean, this is not a high end receiving core. They're going to have to draft some guys, but they may be, they may not be done making moves, right? I would suspect not. The Falcons may not be done making moves. The commanders may not be done making moves. There are till, still teams with some needs, and and maybe they can pull something off. And and Scott wants to know if I see David Njoku as a tight end one this year with Watson. I, you know, he's a guy you're not going to have to draft as a tight end one that might give you tight end one upside. I'm all about drafting people like that. You might not have to draft him as your first tight end. Austin Hooper gone, by the way, to Tennessee in case you people missed that. Um, so, yeah, I think it's entirely possible. Loved his April Fool's joke. Not that much yesterday. Uh, that was a false. That was an April Fool's, Robert. That was the what I was just referring to. He had last year asked for a trade, then kind of settled in. Now he's franchise tagged, you know, so when he threw out the April Fool's, I want to trade, uh, people kind of got caught up in that. And, uh, you know, April Fool's, I've been doing this many years. I've learned to slow roll any news on April 1st because people love April 1st. I'm not a fan of that. So, yes, that was false. They're actually working on an extension. So, Look, he looked really good at times last year. So I think all the all the top weapons there, and look, Jarvis Landry is still available, right? So there are plenty of, you know, plenty of moving pieces still remaining out there. If we took a second to look at some of the uh, top components left there uh, in the receiving world, it's not they're not copious, but there are still some left. Let me get my list up here. Uh, wide receiver Odell Beckham, Will Fuller. 
Will Fuller to Cleveland, anybody? <laughs> Seems to have some chemistry with that Deshaun Watson character, Jarvis Landry, A.J. Green, Julio Jones now available, uh, T.Y. Hilton, uh, Sammy Watkins. You know, the pickings get slimmer, right? <laughs> so once we get there, Auden Tate went to Atlanta. Traquan Smith went back. Uh, so there are still some pieces out there, but not that kind of high-end pieces that we were looking at. So there may be some trades to come is my expectation. And obviously people will be drafting in hopes they can catch some of the same kind of talent. Like people are trying to cash in on, you know, the co look college wide receivers. They've come in pretty pro ready. We've seen the last couple of years, according to Justin Jefferson and uh, Jamar Chase, not everybody plays at that level, right? Not everyone came from that offense, but a lot of players coming from those pro style offenses, they give you a little edge, right? Julio seems destined to be, you know, I mean, or Indy, Playing with Matt Ryan, uh, Scott Kobe mentions Julio seems to be destined to end up in New England. Someone's going to end up in New England. They still need players, and they're talking about that as, you know, making no secret of that. But, man, you, you know, you got to look at Green Bay first and foremost. Why does nobody want to play there all of a sudden? I mean, I don't know. Aaron Rodgers is a very good quarterback. In fact, he was the MVP last year. So, um, so I don't know. But in Cleveland, I think, you know, total win there. I'm throwing aside all the off-field issues because we're talking about fantasy football and I get to throw aside all the off-field issues. We know they're there. We know he's likely to serve some time in terms of league discipline. And uh, and we'll see how that plays out, but throwing some, you know, some draft capital at him as, you know, your starter for half or more of the season doesn't seem like a totally unreasonable approach to me. And if you have problems with that, go ahead and not draft him. This is the thing about fantasy football. It's your team. You get to decide if, you know, moral implications bother you or keep you from drafting a player. I have no problem with that. That's certainly one way to do it. Not everyone does it. So I'm just trying to serve the broad public. All right. So there, that was great, right? Cleveland was great. So what about some of the associated moves there or some of the other moves at quarterback? that we can look at uh, you Seattle trades, Russell Wilson, the Broncos. Well, from again, the Seattle perspective, this is not great. Their quarterback is currently uh, drew lock is the top quarterback. They want to bring Geno Smith back. Could he be their starter? Yes. Drew lock has not instilled great confidence in me. And look again, you, you can see Renaissance for some of these players. We uh, I want to point to Ryan Tannehill. I'm sure there are more, if you want to throw some in the chat, um, that I'm not thinking of at the moment, but that's the most recent one I can think of. There's players who can rebound and come back and kind of reestablish themselves as viable plays. And so hopefully, you know, that could happen, but, but some, maybe Baker Mayfield to Seattle, would he be a good foot? The, the latest on Baker Mayfield is two teams are interested, Tennessee and Tampa Bay. Those would obviously be not plays for this year, but plays for down the road. So if you have dynasty shares of Baker Mayfield, this is going to be interesting to see how it ends up. Uh, and you're going to want to follow along with that and see how it goes. I, you know, I'm not like impressed with Baker Mayfield, but I mean, there are worse quarterbacks out there. There are worse players starting at quarterback out there right now. So, you know, there, and so I don't want to overlook Carolina. I think, I think at this point they're ready to go. They missed their shot at Deshaun Watson. I think the owner in Carolina, David Tepper is the kind of guy who really was, would have been willing to roll the dice. Uh, apparently not to the tune of a fully guaranteed contract, the one that Deshaun Watson got in Cleveland. But right now, Sam Darnold's his starter there. Could you see Baker Mayfield moving ahead of him? I mean, that's not entirely impossible. So those are the two obvious landing spots, Carolina and Seattle, but also the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Tennessee Titans have been mentioned by Charles Robinson at Yahoo as potential destinations. Uh, and those would be longer term plays, right? Because Tom Brady is not getting beat out. Uh, by Baker Mayfield. And I don't know that Ryan Tannehill would, but Ryan Tannehill is also not going anywhere this year because his contract demands that he remain a Titan. But beyond that, it does not demand that he remain a Titan. And so maybe they got to start thinking for the long term. The Atlanta Falcons are thinking of the long term. Do they view Marcus Mariota as that? He's going to get an opportunity. You know, the draft pedigree suggests that somebody thought he could be that Tennessee Titan. So and maybe some time on the bench and we'll give him an opportunity to come back in an offense or at least uh terminology that he's familiar with if they get some pieces around him that'll be be better so uh the so for seattle right now it doesn't look good for if you're dk metcalf tyler lockett investors does not look good who it does look for, good for Pete carroll who does not like to cook according to russell wilson he likes his offense to be run heavy right so yeah it's, robert brings up a good point i don't mind golf for the lions either man i i don't and i think they're giving him some additional weapons uh, they kept Josh Reynolds, a guy that he's familiar with from their time together in L.A. So I kind of like 
where they're at. And, and look, I expect them to draft somebody and see if they can develop them. And, uh, but that doesn't mean Goff might not be the long-term answer there. Whatever we think of him, right? And Pittsburgh is another place, uh, to, you know, so right, we'll get into that. Mitchell Trubisky uh, is currently the QB1 there with Mason Rudolph and Dwayne Haskins also on board. They're counting on some of that talent, that first round talent that they saw in Trubisky. And like, you know, Trubisky might be a good fit there. I think we've talked about this one, but before I left, but if not, I mean, you know, he is good in the short and intermediate. His passer rating and completion percentage in those ranges have been great, and that kind of fits in with what Matt Canada, the offensive coordinator there, wants to do. But I do think we're getting a little in front of ourselves if we think that brief moments we saw of him in preseason in Buffalo are a sign that he's, like, re rehabbed and rebounded and totally a new quarterback. Uh, but working under Josh Allen for a year, I think, has got to be beneficial, and nothing we've seen from Mason Rudolph has been inspiring. So for the – Fantasy fortunes of Deontay Johnson, Chase Claypool, you know, Najee Harris. We want an offense that works on schedule and is able to sustain their success. I mean, you want a competent quarterback. We'll find out if they have one. But I think they at least think they have one that's a capable bridge. I think they'll go the draft route right now. I don't think Baker would be ending up there and also same division. So, yeah. And that is true, Scott. I mean, and that's I think that's the point. I mean, he can't sustain. Okay, Jalen Ray bad, but uh, I think my internet's getting a little screwy there. There we go. Uh, you know, well before Justin Jefferson, and we saw how that worked out for Jalen Rager, and it turns out it's not very good. Sorry, P. Sorry, Eagles. So, so we'll see you there. Sorry for the shaky uh, connection at the moment. We'll hope that rectifies. But you're not wrong, Scott. I mean, I, I think there's hope with Trubisky, and, and I think the Steelers see that as well. But expect them to draft somebody and try and add to that quarterback room, maybe somebody they can, they can develop. Back to Denver, where Russell Wilson is now the quarterback. Do we mention that? That's a good thing for everyone, right? It's good news for Cortland Sutton. It's good news for Judy, Jerry Judy. I mean, we kind of thought he would be one of the pieces going back. It turned out Noah Fant was the piece going back. Albert O, Okwe Boonham. I can say it. I don't know if that's right. It's close. Uh, Albert Okwebunam will be now be the main tight end. He's been a pretty good red zone threat. Uh, Russell Wilson, not afraid to throw to his tight ends in the red zone. Uh, Tim Patrick. I mean, all three wide receivers there seem like they're in a good spot, and you have to wonder if Russell Wilson's skill set isn't like really well suited to what Cortland Sutton does, right? Race down the field, be a big physical presence, high point the ball. Maybe this is a renaissance for him, uh, Sutton. As well, and and maybe a chance for Russell Wilson to cook a little more. And if Nathaniel Hackett is was one of Aaron Rodgers' favorite coaches, a great offensive mind, a high energy guy. So I think you know, I think there's reason to be enthusiastic about this move. It's going to be an offense that certainly Russ likes better. And we'll see if Javante Williams can be the thing we want him to be, which means the thing that isn't running alongside Melvin Gordon. Gordon is not back, Robert. I thank you for asking, setting me up on that. But they are still talking to him. That to me is the one where I can't understand. You know, I thought I was hoping Melvin Gordon would end up in Houston where there's that gigantic hole in their backfield. But now they've added Marlon Mack there, who's been effective at times. We'll see if he can get the job done. Maybe they're not done adding. They've got the money. But maybe Melvin Gordon wants a little more money than people want to pay him. And maybe that's why he's already not back at Denver. They're open to having him back. He's open to going back there. Uh, the fantasy nation is it going, no, no, leave him out of there. We don't want... Melvin Gordon messing up our Javante Williams hopes and dreams. So we'll see how that plays out. I'm seeing Javante Williams right now going in early best balls as, you know, mid to late first round. Melvin Gordon returns there. That's going to be overpaying. So, uh, so we'll see. Like, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> I would love to see Russell. I, th I do think, so uh, I, th I do think that works for both work. Russell Wilson was good for both. You know, Tyler Lockett, who was great on those moon balls that he threw, and DK Metcalf, who gets down the field. I think both those guys. I think, you know, look, Judy can get down the field. He's a good intermediate receiver as well. He's just a damn good player. But I think Sutton is more of a, a downfield guy. I think it is. I think that's exactly correct, Scott, is this is a, of some benefit to Cortland Sutton. He is a player I'm buying in best balls on that hope, right? And he's a guy you should look down your ADP list at. And if, you know,
So I try to take advantage of that disappointment and, and get people to buy in, you know, get people, you know, buy, buy these guys on the dip, you know, as the crypto traders like to say, you know, kind of make out like that. So uh, I'm looking for guys like that, I'm looking for talents that have been previously productive who maybe have a different situation. If we want to throw another guy like that out there, Kenny Galladay, I, it was horrible last year. You're not having to pay for him. He's almost a free square play at this point, given his level of talent and past production. Can Brian Dayball get the most out of Daniel Jones? Maybe. Uh, need some offensive line help. They need a lot of things there, right? But, you know, we've seen Daniel Jones has been a competent passer when the opportunities have arose. So maybe a new coaching staff can maximize the value of a guy like Galladay, Kadarius Tony, those kind of guys. We're going later in drafts than probably they certainly would have last year. So that's the kind of things to watch. For Seattle, though, I do think you're right. Scott, you know, I think Cortland Sutton is a guy I think makes out, but that doesn't mean Jerry Judy doesn't make out, and that doesn't mean you should overlook Tim Patrick. Like, if you're doing the Mike Dempsey of Football Diehards uh, radio show approach, you're drafting the cheapest component, and that's often my approach as well. Uh, you're drafting the cheapest piece of that puzzle. I, You know, I think all three pieces are cheap enough for right now. You can take the one you want. Uh, so so there's that. So let's move on to some uh, another one of these situations here, and again, jump in with questions whenever whenever you have them, and we'll kind of catch up with them. Uh, let's look at the talking about. Uh, we saw that as well with uh, with with Carson Wentz, who horribly disappointed uh, the Colts by coming up short when it mattered most. And that's you know that's a problem for quarterbacks. We what happened to Jared Goff, right? So. That he ended up in Detroit. Now Carson Wentz ends up in Washington. Well, you know, we can look back. I mean, 13 interceptions. I mean, overall, he was probably a better fantasy play than he was a play for the Colts. And I understand why they moved on. And I understand, you know, that it doesn't seem like a favorable outcome for him to wind up in Washington. And I don't know if it's great for Terry McLaurin, but it's not horrible for Terry McLaurin, right? I mean, you know, so let's look back to last year. Michael Pittman was what, just right around in the top 20. And so, and Terry McLaurin was a little lower and playing a little worse quarterback situation. So I don't think it's, uh, it's a reach to believe Terry McLaurin has a chance to improve or at least be a viable play and maybe even a value play with Carson Wentz at quarterback. Thinking that's not an upgrade from last year, the situation, I mean, in all due respect to Taylor Heineke and the amalgam around him, I mean, it wasn't, a, it wasn't an ideal year. They had some other injuries and things to deal with, but they need some more help at wide receiver, and I think that could help them out as well. Maybe Curtis Samuel rises up. But I don't think Carson Wentz to Washington is totally horrible from a fantasy perspective. Is it ideal? No. I mean, ideally, you have Russell Wilson or you get Aaron Rodgers there or something, but no. So, you know, they're working with what they have, and I don't think Carson Wentz is worse. For the Colts, Getting Matt Ryan, I think, you know, you think back a couple of years ago, would you rather have Matt Ryan where he's at now or than more so than Phillip Rivers when he arrived in the Colts a couple of years ago? I'd probably rather have Matt Ryan. I'd like to see what Matt Ryan can do playing behind a competent offensive line and a good offense with a great rushing attack. I mean, I think he might be well-suited to this scheme and can carry them and keep the fantasy values of the players we're interested in high. And, I mean, right now, who are we interested in? Jonathan Taylor, Michael Pittman. Maybe that's all we're interested in. Maybe there's some guys with flyers, Mo Alley Cox, Kylan Granson. I don't know. I don't know how excited I am about any of those guys or the receivers down the depth chart. I'm, you know, I mean, I'm not totally against them, but you know, it's, I don't see any of them going off early in fantasy drafts right now. Right. So, but I do think you have some hope and the, the problem for the Colts is it's another bridge. But if you're looking at guys like Paris Campbell, Ashton Doolin, I mean, you're maybe reaching a little bit. Um, but if you're staying at the top of that, you know, the top of that heap, it's not that bad a deal. And the question, does Jonathan Taylor now catch more passes with Ryan there? I think Jonathan Taylor showed last year he's a really good receiver and he will catch there. Uh, he'll catch the ball. And, and I asked a uh, local beat writer, J.J. Stankovitz of the team's official website, actually. Uh, I think it was just last week about this. It, it, are we kind of seeing Jonathan Taylor show the kind of skill set that's going to limit Naheem Hines? He thinks they want to see more of Hines than they did last year, that maybe they went away from him too much. But the reason they went away from him was because Jonathan Taylor turned out that he can catch the ball really well, and he does great things with the ball in his hands after he catches it. Who knew? He's really good. So I think he will catch some more passes just in general, and I don't think Matt Ryan hurts him in that regard. 
Uh, Robert wants to know, just throwing a question out there, who wins the NFC South by default? Probably. <laughs> you know, that's, I mean, obviously the Giants, you know, the Giants could get better, but it's a low bar for them. Washington would be competitive. Philadelphia would be the team to watch there. I think Jalen Hurts, they are firmly committed to him. Uh, they'll add some receiving talent, I'm sure, uh, and probably try not to overpay for it, as they have in the past. Jalen Rager, again, getting a bad mark here. I feel like I'm picking on Jalen Rager today. It's like a totally random thing. Make me stop. Um, but, but yeah, that would be that would be my guess. Dallas, Dallas still has a really good defense, and uh, they've still got Dak Prescott, and they've still got some really good pieces. We like C.D. Lamb. So, and, you know, the other side of that Amari Cooper trade, they re-signed Michael Gallup. Is he ready for the start of the year? I don't know. So Dalton Schultz was really good. He'll be back. That helps. Uh, but we'll see. Cedric Wilson is gone. There's Noah Brown and guys like that. James Washington, who they signed away from Pittsburgh. Are they going to fill the void until Gallup gets back? That's going to be a question. Maybe we see more of Tony Pollard because of that. So Dallas has no running game. I think as you know, they didn't have as good a running game down the stretch, Scott. I don't know they don't have a running game. I thought, I mean, if you look back at the early numbers, I don't think Ezekiel Elliott was horrible. Uh, the knee got to be an issue, and he got increasingly not good. So I'm not pretending it's great. But they do have a running game. And I'd like to see Dak Prescott run more, maybe a year removed from that that league. But, yes, CeeDee Lamb is going to face way heavier coverages than he did, and that's going to be an issue. Uh, and there's no no two ways or, around it. Um, getting back to some of the quarterback moves, uh, you know, so I think for the Colts, this is basically a win. Obviously, on the other side of the ball, we'll have to see what Marcus Mariota does. I mean, it's not hopeless, but they're so, they've got so much work to do and so many pieces to add to this offense that, you know, you want to talk about funnel offenses. We love them as fantasy managers. And right now, you know, Cordero Patterson, who's a pretty good value in early best balls, by the way. And Kyle Pitts are it. Not as good a value, especially given the circumstances. But they need some guys around them to help make them more effective. We saw Kyle Pitts last year was was a pretty good player. If you add a few touchdowns, he'd be pretty good. Kevin O'Brien wants to know any news on Melvin Gordon. There's zero. Just that the Broncos are still interested. So, uh I don't think anyone wants to pay him what he wants, and maybe he has to wait a little while. Maybe he waits into training camp and looks for injuries and tries to seize an opportunity. I think of the guys that we've seen kind of show up late last year. I mean, they've been there have been some effective players. Devonte Devonta Freeman in Baltimore ended up being a, a decent play, right? Latavius Murray had his moments there as well, and just kind of waiting around maybe isn't the worst idea for a guy like Melvin Gordon, who I think is better than that level of player, right? He's not going to be the Levy and Bell, just a depth addition, you know, for a team late in the case of emergency. He's more than that. I mean, he was very effective last year. So I just don't think anyone wants to pay him what he was getting. And, you know, you look at some of the moves of the guys who I think are worth that. Jonathan or James Conner in Arizona got, what, $7 million a year. Uh, Chase Edmonds, $6 million a year uh, to work in the committee. <laughs> we'll see. You know, see how that goes. And we'll have time to suss all these things out over the coming weeks and watch his OTA start. But I mean, let's, you know, let's not overlook that. So I think for Atlanta, you know, a lot to be told. Let's look at the, just, you know, before we run out of time, I want to touch base on those two really high end moves and what they mean for both teams. The Tyree kill traded to Miami. Um, and so Miami is basically, you know, giving to a Tonga below Mike McDaniels, a new offensive coordinator brings that Mike Shanahan or Kyle, Mike Shanahan, Kyle Shanahan, offense or system you would think and so you know they've added running backs including Raheem Morris Chase Edmonds Edmonds seems like he'll be at the top of the list but as we've seen for the 49ers is expecting him to be the top of the list all season long I don't know that hasn't worked out that well so hopefully he is but Tyree Kill joining this receiving core already with Jalen Waddle and including Mike Gusecki who got the franchise tag I mean, I don't know that this is great news for Jalen Waddle, right? That's the question for me. It knocks it. It's a it's a hit for me, right? It's like Tyreek Hill's going to demand some some targets, <laughs> and but the other thing about Tyreek Hill is, you know, he's kind of an up and down player. I think Jalen Waddle will remain a steadier influence, and maybe he'll, you know, assuming you're getting him cheaper, maybe he's the better play here because I mean, early ADP hasn't yet reflected a huge downturn for Hill. Uh, and or a huge downturn for Waddle, who was going fairly high. Second round, wasn't unusual to see him go. Third round. So I think both of those guys kind of dilute each other's value a little bit, and there's still enough questions for me about Tonga Valoa to wonder if he's really capable of fueling the fires of those two plus uh, Mike Gusecki, who I think Gusecki, you know, gets a bump here. And look, maybe Jalen Waddle benefits from having somebody there who draws coverages away. So 
He can do a lot of run after the catch, take those short and intermediate passes and do great things with them. So can Tyree kill, but also can go deep. So, and I think it's a, you know, look, the guy who gets the bump is Tua Tonga Valoa. He's just got to cash in on it. But if you're in a two quarterback league or taking a chance on a quarterback as your QB two, maybe that you think has some upside or you'd like to believe has some upside. He certainly has the talent. If he, uh, the talent around him, if he has the talent, I mean, remember teams tanked for Tua at one point, somebody thought he had some talent at one point. So maybe you can, you know, draw that out of him in this offense with a good, strong rushing attack and some really good weapons downfield. The other side of the ball, Kansas City Chiefs, there's no way this isn't a knock for Patrick Mahomes, right? And I, you know, I mean, I, I don't, do I really like Tua? No, but I'm open-minded to it, right? I mean, I'm drafting him as the second quarterback and in and, and two QB or super flex leagues, you could probably do worse. So really like no, but like open to yes. I think that's where I'm at on him. I mean, he showed flashes. Uh, I'd like to see consistent production. Maybe Mike McDaniels can get that out of him. We'll see. Um, the other side, though, you know, Patrick Mahomes. I mean, he struggled at times as it was last year. I don't know that this helps him. Uh, I, you know, this doesn't do anything to hurt the target share for Travis Kelsey, but the coverages are going to be a little different. I mean, Juju Smith-Schuster, Marquez Valdez-Scantling. Look, Valdez-Scantling is a fast dude. I think over the last two years, the two fastest speeds in uh, – on the field by next gen stats were Tyree Kill, number two, Mark Trez Valdez Scantling, number one. It's like 21.9 and 22.1. So it's not like a huge thing. And Tyreek will race him if I uh, if I think that's true. Um, but you know, Marquez Valdez Scantling brings some speed to the table, and maybe that's gonna be enough to open things up. They also added Juju Smith Schuster, who, you know, last year aside has been productive. I had a couple, you know, the last two healthy seasons, I think he combined for 200 catches. So Maybe he gives them a second receiving option that's really good. And is Marquez Valdez scaling a true number one? I think you're taking a reach there. Yeah, he seems to drop a lot of balls. And he seems to, you know, be very inconsistent. But he does make plays at times. So, look, and I was totally dismissing Alan Lazard in Green Bay. And I apologize for that. But he's not really back yet. I think he's a free agent as well. Is he still available? Uh, I should double check that before I spout my nonsense. Uh, I think he's still under it. They may have tendered him. Or maybe I wrote about this and I can't, I just can't remember it. How embarrassing is that? It's been a fast two weeks, three weeks. Let's see what's, what I've done with him. Uh, he, he received a tender. So he's tendered second round. So other teams can match that and he can stick around. So, and look, he was good, remember? I mean, two years ago, uh, there was a stretch where he was really good. Then he got hurt against New Orleans and uh, had the uh, sports hernia and missed a fair amount of time. So, like, I mean, you know. But we're asking a lot of guys like Marquez Valdez-Scantling and Alan Lazard to suddenly move up and be premium plays or reliable fantasy producers for the quarterbacks that we're depending on. So, you know, if you were really confident that Patrick Mahomes was your quarterback too, as I was on my list, he's not anymore. Uh, I think probably Kevin... I think there's maybe three or four, but landing spots will depend. Uh, we'll get more into the rookie stuff as we get closer to the draft. I did, if you want to check what we think of the prospects, John Lobb, go to the website. By the way, go to the website, footballdiehards.com. Tons of content going up, tons of news about all these players we're talking about and all the things we're talking about. In addition, all John Lobb's rookie profiles are up and running on there. And if you check the last uh, Ask Me Anything we did from Saturday, two Saturdays ago, John Lobb was a guest and really dug in. So go back to the YouTube channel. If you don't like, if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, subscribe to the YouTube channel uh, and hit the like button whenever you get a chance and hit the notification bell because that helps us out too. But also all the videos are there and you can go back and two weeks ago, myself and John Lobb, we dug into all these prospects. So, and we'll get back into them, Kevin, but I think there's a handful, but there are, you know, they're going to be second round or later draft picks and it'll depend on their opportunities and maybe some other things. I thought Lazard was okay, too. Maybe this year the tight end gets a bump in Green Bay. I have Robert Tunyon. We've seen him be a fine scoring threat, right? So he has a connection. He's very good friends with Aaron Rodgers. Maybe a little security blanket comfort zone. Maybe the running backs play a greater role. By the way, uh, I had a beat writer who covers this team and has for a long time, Bill Huber with SIA.com now, told me a couple weeks ago he thinks this is the year that A.J. Dillon moves ahead of Jones and maybe it makes it a 60-40 split for Dylan. So that's worth watching as you're going in the, in the ranks. Um, let's see. Someone asked me a question in your early best balls, who's moving up drafts and who's falling. 
I think most of these things are in response to these these moves. Adams dropping a bit, Hill dropping a bit. Uh, some of the players associated with them rising and falling in associated ways. Uh, I see J.K. Dobbins is a guy that I've noticed with a fast rise. I think you're going to see Allen Robinson rise quickly as well. Um, and I want to talk about those two moves before we get out of here today. The Devontae Adams uh, to Las Vegas. Look, it's where he wanted to be. Uh, the Packers offered to make him the highest paid receiver in the league. And he said, no, nah, I want to go be the highest player, paid player in the league. Uh, in case you did not know, he played with Derek Carr at Fresno State. They led the FBS in many categories. So it's not like they didn't produce at that level, as high level. It's not like they weren't super productive. Uh, so there's something there. I think, uh, in the, you know, over the course of their time together, uh, uh, I want to say that uh, Adams led the led the nation in receiving yards, catches, things like that. Uh, Derek Carr and passing yards. So, I mean, there's something there. They have a new head coach in Josh McDaniels. I'm sure they'll figure out ways to make use of him. But also there, Hunter Renfro, and also there, uh, Darren Waller, guys that maybe will keep that high, you know, the, the super high target share a little more in check. So. It'll be interesting, and we've got to see, you know, I, look, Derek Carr's been not bad at times, right? So he's one of those guys I often draft as my quarterback, too, and I often get quarterback one numbers out of him. I think Devontae Adams adds to that. Uh, so I love that. Left Green Bay, bereft. Also want to talk about Allen Robinson getting to the Rams. I think that's going to be, you know, all of a sudden, Allen Robinson is playing with the best quarterback he's played with as a pro, right? That, he, that soon. So Cooper Cup doesn't take a hit there. Allen Robinson rises. Robert Woods out of the picture. If they bring back Odell Beckham, he's a great number three with big play potential. A uh, big winner here is Matthew Stafford, who also got a long-term extension a couple weeks ago. So congratulations to him on both the extension and the additional talent in his offense. So a lot to like there. Uh, the uh, We mentioned the Jaguars getting Christian Kirk, paying him a boatload of money. Uh, to show up there, and he's got to deliver, right? And if he doesn't, you know, it's not as big a contract as it's been advertised to be. And if he does, he gets a lot of money, and we'll see. I mean, look, the thing I like about what – and ja Jacksonville did other things. Evan Ingram brought in. They added some other pieces, and so Travis Etienne hopefully heals. But they brought in a coaching staff that's going to try to get the most uh, out of Trevor Lawrence, and hopefully they can do that. Doug Peterson and a really high-end offensive staff. But I think, you know, has a chance, right? More of a chance than last year's staff, I would say, is a safe bet. Uh, some of the other moves I just wanted to mention and get in here before we, you know, so we don't forget totally. Uh, <clears throat> uh, we had some of the wide receiver moves. Not that Cooper I talked about. Robert Woods to Titans. Like, I don't think that's bad news for anybody, right? Having a solid and consistent, assuming the ACL is going. Yes, Mike Dempsey is doing cartwells with Christian Kirk. And all the moves they've made. They've made a ton of moves. They had a ton of money. They have, you know, and they needed to get some help around him. Um, <clears throat> so I like, I do like the uh, Robert Woods to Tennessee because I think that's good for A.J. Brown and also Austin Hooper there. I think maybe they can narrow down the tight end targets to one tight end. That would be fantastic. I am not high on Rondell Moore in Arizona. So far as I've seen, he looks like a gadget player until I see more of him. Like, you know, will there be more opportunities at the moment? Yes, I think they're not done adding there. I think Hopkins will be the good, will be the guy that I'm interested in there. Um, you know, last year, Kyler Murray spread the ball around a little bit more than he had in past seasons. Maybe by necessity, he doesn't move it around as much this year. So so I'd like to see more from Rondell Moore. Or honestly, I mean, you know, I thought they drafted that guy a couple of years ago and they got Andy Isabella. It turns out not. So I don't know. Not a, not a huge fan of that move. I do like DJ Chark, as I mentioned, in Detroit. I think that's a fine move. Um, you know, Chark has been good at times. And, like, I don't think Jared Goff is horrible. I mean, you know, you know, we've got the sour taste in our mouth from his time and the way it ended with the Rams. So I get that. Just like we have a sour taste in our mouth the way Carson Wentz's time in Indy added. You leave on a down note. It's just like in fantasy. Someone disappoints you. That's kind of the perception that's left. A uh, couple of the running back moves. Mentioned Leonard Fournette back. Love that. Love the, his return. Think he's think he's this guy, Scott, that will be rising. They could well bring A.J. Green back. That would not surprise me in Arizona. Um, but Fournette's a guy who wrote his rising. Cordero Patterson, now that we know they're back, uh, we know he's rising. I mean, those guys in the, in the offenses, in the situations that made them fantastic plays last year, gives us at least some hopes. 
I think Goff can at least get it down the field well enough. I mean, I'm, you know, like I'm not trying to pretend he's a, you know, top 10 quarterback, but certainly serviceable in a world where there's not everybody is. A um, couple others, uh, I think uh, Ronald Jones heading Kansas City, bad news for uh, Clyde Edwards Lair. I mean, you know, it's not good news. I mean, clearly they don't believe in him as a featured back, right? So. I don't know if it's great for that, but they didn't have a lot of guys under contract. So beyond that, there's some underlier moves that we'll get, in, get into over the course of time. And if you have questions specifically about any of them, go ahead, go to the website, hit the free agent moves page. You'll find a whole list of all the free agents, where they move to, links to all the information about the moves. So plenty to like there. Can Amon Ross St. Brown shine next year with DJ Char Edition? Sure. I mean, I thought I thought he was great. I, you know, d- d- does it help him to have the targets diluted? I don't know. TJ Hawkins will be back and he was hurt last year. So DJ DeAndre Swift will be a factor in this passing attack, maybe for the full season, if he can stay healthy. So, I mean, you know, Detroit is a team that might be worth watching. I mean, they've certainly got some talent. that has got to still prove itself, right? Like I'm not out here advocating everyone jump on the Detroit bandwagon because I'm not, but you know, it's easy to overlook players on bad teams and even the worst teams end up having some offense. And we saw that at times last year with Detroit. We also saw them have none at times last year. So I get it. Um, but you're trying to play the values and that's what we always stress here. I always stress here and we do at football diehards trying to find guys at the right price, not overpaying in a extravagant way, but be willing to jump up ADP. Remember average draft position. It's not when you should draft somebody. It's when somebody's being drafted. If you want to draft them, you got to jump a little ahead of it, right? Simple stuff there that, you know, well, you know, the, but these are the kind of things that we're looking for and we're looking to help you leverage. I love Swift this year as well. I think we saw it when he was healthy last year. He was a monster. We saw the way they want to use him as both a receiver and runner. He could be very good. I totally agree with that, Scott Kobe. All right, so I'm going to get out of here. Before I do, I want to remind you, uh, football diehards today, if you're watching this on Saturday, the 2nd of April, I'll have Matt Waldman on. We're just an hour today, so he'll be the full hour. On uh, Sunday, we're going to be looking at the AFC East. Mike Dempsey and myself, you'll catch me on Fantasy Dirt this week as well. I think I'm on Wednesday and maybe more. Uh, so Sunday night as well on football diehards, two hour show, as I mentioned in the AFC. So don't miss any of that. Check the website. Lots of stuff going by. I do see Swift as being a top five talent. I don't know that he's in an offense that will allow him to do that. Scott. So, you know, I, you know, the good news is you don't have to draft him like that. Right. So yes, I could see him finishing there, but I'm happier not paying that price. Right. As you well know, you know that. So, um, so that's the key, right? He's, you know, those are kind of, people you want to draft uh, and maybe be willing to jump up above ADP to make sure you secure their services. If you believe as Scott, or as I do, as Scott asked about is he has that ability to be a top five talent. I do think that's true. Uh, Thank you for coming by. I will do this again next Saturday. I've mentioned before, I'm going to get some of you more involved in this and you know, it's coming. Um, We're going to do some drafts. We might do those in the evenings during the week. Uh, so that we can get more people involved, do some drafts and kind of do real time uh, analysis of the drafts and discuss them as we go through, maybe bring on some other analysts to look at them as well. So lots of plans here, lots going on. Tune in to Sirius XM Fantasy Football Diehards on at least three times a week. We're on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Uh, Saturdays and Sundays, we're on 5 to 7 Eastern. Monday night, we're on 10 to midnight Eastern. Catch me on Fantasy Dirt with Michael Fabiano at least once a week. Coming up in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be on a fair amount more. Uh, So don't miss that as well. Watch for the schedule or catch me here uh, next Saturday and I'll lay that schedule out. Go to the website, footballdiehards.com and uh, get in on the early bird specials that we have going there. Magazines, a website, uh, constant flow of news and notes. These videos are part of this and we'll have other videos coming. Got John Lobb's rookie stuff. uh, Jamie Calandro writing some content early, also early. Check out his uh, CD Lamb versus Jalen Waddle take. Uh, before the move, but some interesting analysis there as well. And we'll get more of that coming your way at footballdiehards.com. I'm Bob Harris. I'll see you next week for sure. Uh, And in the meantime, uh, hit the website. Take care.